your host Joey and Kevin Tejido. All right, welcome to another episode of the Fin Hub Show powered by BetUS. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure to check out BetUS and use code YouTube150 for 150% bonus on your first deposit. The next two deposits will be for 125% bonuses. So make sure to check out BetUS and get started on betting today. So the Miami Dolphins stay on the win column and defeat the Las Vegas Raiders 34-19. Tua had himself a day, put up 288 yards and three touchdowns. Jonu Smith also contributed in a big way to the offense. The Miami Dolphins win their second in a row. Kevin, what did you think about that victory? Uh, I thought it was convincing. You know, the the offense just completely dominated all, all game able to score on every single drive except for that one right before the half which we didn't have any time to do anything with the ball it was like i believe it was like 40 seconds Mm -hmm. 40 something seconds yeah around there right yeah um but yeah we couldn't get anything going there but i mean that's other than that we were dominating time possession uh defense was a little choppy uh chop had a fantastic game again just wasn't able to get to the quarterback we're seeing a lot of like that jalen phillips type uh thing he's just always right by the quarterback about to get him right Mm -hmm. these are gonna start to stack and fall um other than that i i feel like we did miss um kendall fuller out there a lot you know we we had to rely on an undrafted rookie and and storm duck cater kohu sloppy tackling um aside from the defense they didn't give up two touchdowns one of them to brock brock bowers yeah uh again you know inconsistencies with the with the safety play the tackling has just been atrocious from the safeties especially jordan poyer he should have had him down you know especially this is a guy that's a really good tackler in jordan poyer but i guess he's just he's just losing his his way you know he's getting older um and then the other one i want to argue that that other touchdown that they got to that running back you know a little dump off right it should have been a false start to begin with it should have been called back so i mean things that should have been called back and you know would have the whole outlook of the game would have been a lot different if you didn't allow a touchdown there but you know at least the offense is doing its job and we've kind of done a complete you know 180 on what what our identity is and um and yeah offense to a to was humming to was to was doing his thing he looks impressive out there yeah devon hn also doing his thing had a pretty decent game overall uh like i said john o. smith is looking really good. He's that number three receiver for the Dolphins. And at this point, he might even be the, the second option for Tua right after Tyreek Hill, the way that Jalen Waddle's playing, who didn't have a bad day either, but hasn't been as involved in the offense as we would have hoped. Um, either way, Tua's really just moving the ball around. Julian Hill got some action too in there. Uh, I was really impressed with the offense. I've, I've been really impressed with Tua. The play calling has looked a lot more even, a lot better from Mike McDaniel. And um, I think we've definitely seen some growth from him this season. And um, it's coming at the right time. The Dolphins still have to string together a bunch of wins here to keep their playoff hopes alive. But we do have a a pretty good schedule left. We're going to have the Patriots coming up. Then we got the Packers, who's one of our, that's one of our bigger challenges left in the season. We have the Niners and we also have the Texans also that are going to be pretty big matchups for the Dolphins. But if they can get those wins then playoffs are, are a real a big possibility for this team yeah and the Packers had a hard time beating the the um Bears yesterday I think they they won off a block field field goal which the Packers I mean the Bears would have won that game right it wasn't even a hard field goal to make um but yeah I think Jordan loves having his um inconsistencies in this this year I think everyone was were they were ready to anoint him as one of the top five quarterbacks in the league just because of what he did on the, the back end of last year. Right. I think he's showing that, you know, he's having essentially a sophomore slump because this is a second year playing in the NFL, pretty much, you know, even though he's been there since Tua got drafted. 
Um, so yeah, that's definitely, I think it's not going to be an easy game, but it's a winnable game. I think it's a, a game at this point in the season we should win. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't want to get too cocky, but you know, the way the, the offense has, has been playing, the way the defense looked against the Rams, if we can just, if we can show up to those big games with that type of defense, maybe get, get back a guy like Bradley Chubb and, Maybe a few weeks. Maybe we don't have him for that Packers game, but maybe may we have him for that Texans or the 49ers game, you know? Isaiah Wynn, I want to argue, if he's back, this run game, we're just going to open up a, a different level to it. Um, like you said, John Smith, I, I think he was fantastic. I think um, he's really showing that he's he's our he's our tight end for, for years to come. And I think Tua's basically proving all the doubters wrong right now and showing how essential he is to this offense, how great of a quarterback he is. And, um, and yeah, he's, he's a franchise quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. You know, I, I know he has his injury concerns, but if he's out there on the field, he is our best chance to win, 100%. Yeah, at this point, it's, it'll be hard to argue that Tua is not one of the top quarterbacks in the league. I, yeah. I think it's, um, it wouldn't be fair to say he's a top five. I think that's, that's reaching. But mm-hmm. I, I would argue that he's in the top 10 somewhere yeah. as far as quarterbacks in the NFL when healthy. Which I, I you remember in... in, in Two years ago, people were like, just give me a top 12 quarterback in the league and I'd be happy, right? Right. Tua's in the top 10. I mean, I don't think there's a doubt about that. I, I know there's a lot of Dolphins fans that are going to say, oh, he, he's not, though, because he can't do this. But he's actually answering a bunch of questions or concerns from the, from the fan base, which is, can he go off script? Can he can he scramble and get these, these much-needed touchdowns? Which he's showing that if he holds onto the ball a little bit longer and he gets out of the pocket, he can make things happen with his legs. Right. And I'm not saying that he's running for 30 yards. He's just making things happen outside of the pocket. Extending the play Extending a little bit. Extending the play. Yeah. Which we have said, and uh, I, I feel like it was a few episodes ago, we were talking about Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle in this offense. If Tua can extend the play, those are the type of receivers that benefit the most out of that because they're so fast, you can't hold them for so long. You know what I'm saying? So... You give Tyree Kill an extra three seconds out there, he's burning the guy that's on him, you know? So. Yeah, Tyree Kill's also been dealing with that injury, um, which mm-hmm. didn't slow him down too much in this game. Uh, even still, there was a pass there that Tua lofted, and I think, uh, you know, the, the the corner was able to bat that down. But I, I think the reason why it was lofted up a little bit is because of Tyreek's injury, not necessarily because Tua just wanted to do that. Yeah, um, It's one of those things where if you bullet pass that, to Tyreek Hill, it could it could hurt him. He's probably not going to catch it and whatever. So Tua has to put some air under it, and, and then it gets batted down. Um, so plays like that do hurt the team, hurt the offense a little bit. I, I think Tyreek Hill needs surgery, but he is is not opting for surgery in the season. He'll probably wait till after the season to get that done. Jalen Waddle, though, um, hasn't really found his groove necessarily with the offense and with Tua. He's come up on some bigger plays for us, even still. So he's he still shows value there. But I'm wondering what it is exactly with Waddle that's that's hindering him so much this year. Um, and and hopefully they can get him rolling. Even though the offense is doing their thing, you know the running game is is there even without Alec Ingold, and he provides an extra layer in that blocking for our running backs. So he's been missed the last two weeks, and when he comes back, it's going to be another level too. So there's still some key players missing on offense. We're humming. They could be a little bit better. On defense, Zach Seeler's a guy that, you know, I want to bring up because he's really been all the difference in this defense. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize just how important this guy is. Since he's come back, we've been able to win two games. And he's a he's he's a leader on that defense. He's just a guy that gets things done for us. And um, I just want to give him his flowers because he's been crucial to this Dolphins team yeah it was refreshing to, to hear one of the announcers say that one of the most underrated players in the whole NFL so people are starting to see the the value that Sealer brings and and we've argued in the past that he might be better than Christian Wilkins I think he's showing that that's not mu- it's it's still an argument you can still argue Christian Wilkins isn't out there playing mm-hmm. but he's just as good or better and I think Calais Campbell has really you know, mitigated any concerns on that defensive line. I think Deshaun Hand has been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Benito Jones is really showing something on that defensive line as well. Um, you know, he did this this little bum rush on on one of the linemen, and he just put him straight into the quarterback. Um, 
Yeah, the defense, there are some bright spots there that I, you know, in the beginning of the season, we were like, eh. Like, Jordan Brooks didn't show much in the beginning of the season. He's been playing fantastic. Yeah. Anthony Walker has been a, a pleasant surprise for us. Yeah. So, I, I think it's about getting healthy, and I think we're showing that if we have some some bit of health right now in the season, we're a very talented team, and this team can go far. It's unfortunate what happened at the beginning of the season. It is. But, but we're showing with some time to gel together, with Tua healthy, with the line playing well, this team is actually a force to be reckoned with and one of the top teams in the NFL. Yeah, I agree. Defense, I, I w what I would really like to see here is the offense and defense just have a complete game. Yeah, special uh, teams as well, right? Special teams too, yeah. So, so the offense has been, I, I feel like the last three games, uh, for the most part, we've been pretty good. That's actually the last four games. No, I, would I, say. I saw a stat. I don't know if you saw this, but I think since Tua's return, mm -hmm. we are the second uh, high scoring team wow. right behind the Lions. That's and crazy. And I think we're averaging, I th I mean, don't. we'll find it. Maybe we can pop it up here if I find it. Uh, 3.15 um, points per, per possession. And I think the Lions are averaging 3.18. Okay. So we're right we're behind right the there. Lions. The Lions just put up 50-something against the Jaguars. 51, yeah. Yeah, the, the worst team in the NFL, right? So, I mean, they just ran up the score on them. But, I mean, that, that says a lot, man. We're, we're talking about a team in the Dolphins that, bro, it was a struggle to get 12 points. Like, we yeah, couldn't. It was, and, it was crazy. And now we're getting 30-point games, 29, 28, you know, so. Yeah, this team without Tua has been uh, – it, it was really hard to watch. And now that Tua's back – We've seen how impressive this team can look and how the offense in particular is really just taking off now to a, a, a and, and even in a different direction. It's yeah. not the high flying, um, just deep bombs to Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Yeah, it goes back to what you said, though. It's it's growth in this right. offense and growth in, in Mike McDaniel. I think the opposite's having happening from last year, right? Last year we were this badass, you know, team offense in the beginning of the season, getting these 60 yard bombs Tyree kill taking it to the house every week you know what i'm saying uh j uh jalen waddle devon h and uh all these guys ripping off these big runs big plays and we were showing that we we're only successful if we got those big plays now we're right. showing that we're successful without those big plays you know getting these five yard chunk plays 10 yards at a time you know what i'm saying like very small plays but it's leading to these long drives that's draining the clock not putting as much pressure on the defense. And and this is this is, you know, this is playoff winning football. Later stages of the year playing foot like winning football. So yeah. It's beautiful to see. Yeah, it's one of those things where you, you can run the clock and yeah. um and really drain drain that clock and, and sustain these drives that lead to points too. Exactly. It's not just about these long drives that go nowhere. They actually lead to points, keeps the the other offense on the sidelines. Um, it's so, essentially getting cold, yeah. you know, and they're like, I don't know what to do. It, and it's, it's so demoralizing for that offense because it's like, damn, bro, here, here they go again. They're going to get the ball and drain seven minutes off the clock. Maybe there's six minutes left in a game and we're able to drain all six minutes because we're able to move the ball the way we've been moving, it, right. you know, three yards at a time, five yards. You get me? So, so it's been, it's been a different watch, but I, I, I was pleasantly surprised with the offense yesterday. I still think the defense can pick it up, but, um, but also did a great job. Yeah. So um, I, I would like to see maybe this in this Patriots game coming up, I would like to see a complete game from both sides of the ball, special teams also, um, and, and and really just dominate these Patriots yeah. um, the way that I, I think this team really can. Uh, and now dominate that, a, a Patriots team that has been playing better in recent weeks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So uh, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to these next few games. The, anything is still possible. The Dolphins are still very much in the hunt. So um, we're not turning in the towel yet. Just uh, let's see. Let's see yeah. if they can continue to make this push. I have a quick question for you. Um, and I know it's too early. Let, let's wait till the season ends. But what are you doing right now with Tua? I, I think, like, would you keep Tua? Or are we still, like, on this wave of we need a, to replace him? Like, what would you say? With Tua? No, I'm yeah. keeping Tua. Okay, I don't cool. think there's a, there's a doubt. Awesome. No, I mean, but it was it was a question, you know, before with and which in in recent weeks, we've been hearing some things. I think Reason was saying this, that it was the NFL that stepped in yeah. to put Tua on IR. So 
What do you think about that? I, I, well, I think the whole thing with Tua and the concussions and the NFL, other players getting these concussions, Tua's being treated differently, mm -hmm. definitely, for his concussions. And um, just the, the, the look of everything that's happened with Tua, I think the NFL is trying to protect themselves from that situation. But if you look at other players, even on our, our own team, Kendall Fuller's already had two concussions this season. Yeah. And um, the NFL is not really butting in about that. It's just that, I guess, Tua with his history and it, him being on primetime, the, the entire world watching that the game. The look of the, the look of, of, of things. They just wanted to stay away from that. And um, it hurt us because, you know, that's four games that Tua was out. When Tua was ready to, I think, apparently be, he was apparently ready the next game um, or at least the very game after the very next game after that. So um, it hurt us, but it is what it is at this point. Uh, I think that I think that Tua is going to be here. Um, he does have to continue to protect himself because, you know, the situation is very clear. Like you are not, you are not durable at least up there. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I still, anytime he runs out of the pocket, I'm I'm still, you know, freaked out. But um, yeah, you know, whatever. It is what it is, and it's a part of the game. And and Tua is a great quarterback, so I'm I'm keeping him on this team. I do think that we need to do something about the backup quarterback situation, but that's the way I look at it. I'm yeah, keeping Tua. I, I, I would say you know, we were we were on this uh, I guess this tip of saying that you know we need to we need to draft a young stud to put behind Tua. I don't even think we need to do that at this point. I think we just need a solid veteran, a guy like Joe Flacco, a guy like Gardner Minshew, a guy like. Uh, Winston, you know what I'm saying? Um, Jameis Winston. Someone that, yeah, we might have to spend $8 million a year or possibly 10 which we, we don't want to allocate that much money to already such an expensive position that we're paying, what are we paying to, like $50 million a year? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so essentially we'll be paying $60 million on a quarterback. Uh, but I think it just, if, if you want to as your quarterback, you need to do that because... There's a possibility you're gonna miss. Tua's gonna miss four games. He's gonna miss two. You might miss half the year. You know, you never know. Yeah. And uh, at this point in time, guys like Tua don't fall off a tree. You know no. what I'm saying? Even if let's say the Dolphins decide, let's draft Shadour Sanders. Mm -hmm. Let's draft. Uh, it's not a given. Cam Ward. It's not a given. You know, hey, didn't we all think that uh, Bryce Young might have been a pretty decent quarterback? Doesn't look that great. Yeah. And then and then the opposite happened. Uh, uh, Stroud, which was the second pick, is the way more talented quarterback. So even these GMs don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, they, these guys look good on the field, but then, you know, once they get to the NFL, it's just a different level of play. Yeah, you just never know. And that, uh, you do know what you have in Tua at this point. And what you have in Tua is, in my opinion, a top 10 quarterback who can lead a top five offense. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, from everything from Tua's ability um, to his leadership the way that he he carries himself, I think these are all things that are, could be overlooked. But but Tua really is that guy for Miami right now, yeah. and the energy is completely different when he's out there and available for the team. And then I think that's that's something that's being overlooked too, because yeah, you do have guys like Justin Herbert who who physically have all of this mm -hmm. talent just oozing out of them, but Tua doesn't have all that. Tua doesn't have the massive arm. He, he doesn't, doesn't have it. the legs. He doesn't. But he does have a lot of other things that these quarterbacks don't have, and it's these intangibles that that do get overlooked. As long as the Dolphins can keep winning, I don't think that there's there's really a conversation to be had there. It's just about getting a competent backup quarterback in the, at this point um, for the Miami Dolphins. And um, I, I think they're going to be good. They're going to be yeah. good going forward. Well, I will say, uh, so comparisons were always like, oh, Tua's like a Jared Goff. Jared Goff's pretty good in my opinion. He looks great. Uh, people would argue that Trevor Lawrence was a better quarterback than Tua. No, when and what and what on what planet is he better? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, there's these things that I I guarantee you more than half the fan base. If you ask them right now, would you have Tua or Trevor Lawrence? They would say Trevor Lawrence because you know he's a pretty quarterback. He's he's, he he's tall. He's got the arm. He's pretty strong. He, he he can move. You know what I'm saying? Tua doesn't need all that though. Tua's accurate. Tua's cerebral. Tua has this this precision like no other and I, I'm so happy he's our quarterback honestly honestly me too um but yeah let's see if the Dolphins can continue pushing and fighting for that playoff spot again still very much alive so uh let's see what we do against the Patriots and let's keep it running let's round the table
But anyway, that's going to do it for today. If you guys haven't already, make sure to check out BetUS and use code YouTube150 for 150% bonus on your first deposit. That's YouTube150. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give us a like, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks up.